Tonight, foster kids treated worse than inmates and abandoned pets. What kind of life is that for these children? It's not a life. Endless rides, sitting in parking lots, forced to live in cars. It breaks my heart. Eight on your side pulls back the curtain. It's not the best that they can do. This is what they choose to do. And exposes the tragic lives these children are forced to live. Somebody needs to be held accountable for this. Good evening, I'm Stacy Scheibel. And I'm Keith Kate. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, an Aid on Your Side investigation exposes a foster care failure. Foster kids held in cars in a gas station parking lot, going nowhere. Investigator Mark Douglas has been looking into this story for more than a month now. He shows us tonight what he's uncovered, and some of it's hard to believe, Mark. It is very troubling, and because we discovered a pattern of possible child abuse by the very agencies that we pay millions to protect these foster kids. Now, these foster children are supposed to be safe in someone's home, but they are spending countless hours instead, sitting in cars and vans in a Wawa parking lot because they have nowhere else to go. Day after day and night after night, this is what passes for foster care housing in Hillsborough County. Kids crammed into Kias, Corollas, and Sedona vans. And they're just sitting there throughout the night or throughout the day. Sade Moore is a former youth and family alternatives case manager. She is one of the YFA workers forced to keep foster kids in cars in a Wawa parking lot. Some of these kids aren't going to school. Some of these kids aren't going to any day treatment programs. By the time Moore reached out to us, we'd already been watching this Waters Avenue Wawa station for weeks. Moore confirmed this parking lot amounts to home away from home for hard to place foster teens. It is very troubling. I've lost sleep to working it. Week after week, we saw YFA workers holding the same teenager here while they searched for a foster bed. Moore told me that girl isn't the only YFA foster kid with no place else to sleep. Between the hours of 7 a.m. all the way up to whatever time at night that a placement will receive them, it could sometimes be as late as 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. I've even heard of some being three in the morning. Moore tells me that girl at the Wawa station is one of six to 12 foster teens banned from sitting in YFA offices, all because of bad behavior. So they're taken to Wawa to keep them calm because they can use the Wi-Fi on their phones. Correct. And the bathroom. Correct. What kind of life is that for these children? It's not a life. It's not any better than the life that they're taking away from each day. That's horrible. Former foster child Maria Young cried when we showed her our video. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. It really does. And I'm sure she's not the only one that's suffering right now. What would you say to her? I would just hug her and let her know that there's people here that are going to help you. One of those people just might be Hillsborough County Commissioner Sandy Merman. What kind of world do we have for these children if we're allowing this to happen? Merman was furious three years ago when Eight on Your Side uncovered foster kids sleeping in the offices of another Eckerd contractor. Eckerd now pays YFA to provide foster care, and Merman is now furious again after seeing our surveillance. We take care of abandoned pets at Pet Resource Center better than this girl is being taken care of. Sade Moore insists top managers at YFA not only know about the Wawa warehousing, they gave the orders. Is this the best they can do? It's not the best that they can do. This is what they choose to do. Eckerd Connects oversees the YFA contract, and YFA uses Eckerd vans to transport kids to and from the Wawa station. I am very speechless because I was assured by Eckerd that this was not happening again. Ooh, something has to be done about this. It's not right. I am going to call the secretary at DCF. I'm, he needs to conduct an investigation immediately. He has to. Now, after that interview last night, Merman called the DCF secretary to share her concerns and says it troubled him too. A few hours ago, Eckerd announced it is firing YFA for leaving kids unsupervised in the community and will conduct an emergency search for another agency. YFA says it regrets Eckerd's decision, but has a steadfast commitment to provide the best care for children and teens, including the most troubled that we just told you about. 
you've been working on this for a while. We've talked about it often, and we often come back to the children. Mm -hmm. What about the kids? Now that we've this organization no longer is in charge, what happens? Where that, do they go? That's a big question. There are more than 1,700 kids in the Hillsborough system. No immediate change because this firing doesn't actually take a place for another 90 days or so, so they have some transition time. But the bottom line is changing providers does nothing to solve the housing problem we pointed out. Nothing at all. That's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Mark.